Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ross Bailey. I'm one of the Line 6 product specialists and I want to welcome you to another Learning with Line 6. Um, hope everyone is well and I hope the sound is okay. Um, I've tested and hopefully you can hear my voice and hopefully when we get to it, you will hear the guitar. I know there's a little bit of a delay. So I will fill this little bit with, uh, with awkwardness while someone hopefully comments and says, yay, he sounds all good. Uh, Bernard, good evening. Afternoon, sorry, wherever you are in the uh, in the world. I am in the UK, so it's evening for me. Um, hoping that I've pressed all the right buttons and my voice is coming through. So just give me a thumbs up or a yay, we can hear you okay. Um, and I'll do some more awkward silences. Brilliant. Loud and clear. Oh, Dale. Good evening, sir. Uh, evening, Jason. Uh, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you all again for joining us. So today, I'm going to cover the age-old problem of option paralysis. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of you in here that don't suffer from that. You know exactly what you're doing. But I see this coming up quite a lot where someone will buy a, a Helix or an HX or a PodGo um, or, for that matter, any modeler. I think this, um, th this kind of thing goes through any multi-effects or whatever. Um, the option paralysis thing, which is just you're spoilt for choice. Now, I know some people want more choice. They want more, more, more. And yeah, absolutely, because more choice equals more flexibility. Um, but for some people, it's just too much. So I, I want to try and help you kind of get over that. Uh, hello from Montreal. Long time Line 6 client. Hello, good evening, Victor. Um, yeah, Bernard. Bernard gets it. So, Bernard, Bernard. Apologies. Um, so, we, I'm going to refer back a little bit. Uh, I did one of these a few weeks ago on Back to Basics. Um, so, if you have been kind of struggling or everything's a bit overwhelming, go back and watch that one as well, if you can stand a, another hour of my voice. Um, but that kind of really strips everything down, and, and I will be repeating a little bit of that because it's important. But I, I want to try and get you to the sound in your head a little bit quicker. So where do you start when, when you, you're just faced with all of this stuff? Um, you start with an amp and a cab, realistically. The, the basics to any tone, and again, this is going to vary depending on your level of experience and, and kind of where you're at with Felix or Podgo or whatever, but ultimately, you're playing guitar and chances are you want to be going through an amp and you definitely if you're using an amp you probably definitely want to be going through a cab or an IR so we want to kind of start there um, and, and I guess now is a great time to pull up um, my HX edit because if you are still fairly new to all of this um, you will uh, Give me two seconds. Let me see if I can shrink this without shrinking this too much. No, I can't. Boo. Right. Okay. Do do. You don't want to see me. You want to see that. Um. Uh, what have we got? Keeping an eye on the comments. Try and keep up. Um. And I usually fail. So, so we've got an empty preset here. Now, like I said, we want to start with an amp. Now, I, I actually start with an amp and cab, um, and I add reverb, or talent as I call it, uh, just because I know that it's just going to be a little bit more interesting than just an, a dry amp on its own. So I'm going to start by adding an amp and a cab block here. Now, as you may or may not know, we have a choice. We have an amp and cab. We have an amp on its own, uh, just the preamp and the cab. Uh, you may want the amp and cab separately, and that's for a different reason, but like uh, the Back to Basics, we're going to keep this simple, and we're going to go into the amp and cab section. So, I mean, this is the list of amps. It's just huge. Um, and realistically, the chances of you having played all of these amps and knowing what each of them responds like, sounds like, all the different settings, it's probably slim. Um, I've played a ton of amps in my time, and I've not played, you know, half of these. So, 
I always tend to go with what I know and that's a good starting point. Now we're going to come back to that. So where do we start? We start with an amp and cab, uh, but which amp and which cab and then we can get into which mic. So the theory that I use behind this is what am I trying to achieve? Uh, what kind of tone am I looking to get? Is it a clean tone? Is it a high gain tone? Is it somewhere in between? Uh, do I want a kind of clean amp and then use various pedals? Uh, sort of a pedal platform idea, uh, which I personally used uh, with tube amps and analog pedals for years. And that's okay. So it's just kind of having a plan of where you want to go. So if we just start with a clean amp, that's a good starting point and we can manipulate from there. Uh, I've just pressed the wrong button. Let's go back to uh, that and that. There we go. Juggling screens, which I'm terrible at. So we've got all of these different amps. And this is where a little bit of kind of knowledge comes in. Um, you know, refer to the manual to kind of check out the code names. But we know that if, or hopefully you would know that if you're going for a high gain sound, chances are you might not want to start with something like the model of a Fender Twin um, or a Deluxe Reverb or something. But as a clean sound, it's a, it's a great starting point. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to go, right, okay, here's a, here's a model of a Fender Twin. Um, it's very quiet in here. Sorry. Do, do, do. Why this has suddenly gone quiet? Give me two seconds, bear with me. Bear with me a mo. Quiet in my room and guitar needs to be loud because, because I said so. Then's the rules. So we've got basically a clean amp sound there. And like I say, I will always go in and I'll always add a reverb. Um, I'll come back to this section as well. Um, and I'm going to do that. There's a reason for that. Um, please do refer to my Back to Basics video uh, where I explain this. Just kind of gets the reverb out of the way. There we go. So we've got a nice clean sound. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for straight out of the gate. Um, now, I know to go to that amp model um, or an amp model like it because I know that a, a Fender Twin is clean. It's like super clean. Um, if I wanted something with a little bit of edge, then i maybe choose something else. So this is kind of another subject um, that we're going to talk about, and that's just kind of general gear knowledge. Um, hopefully everyone knows that a Fender Twin is clean and a dual rectifier. Generally, you know, you, you don't buy a dual rectifier for its clean sound, you buy it for the filth. Um, and that's kind of the thing to bear in mind. It's like, where do we want to go? And a little bit of research into, into what you're looking for. Like you would if you were, you know, if you didn't have a modeler and you were looking for a new amp or a new pedal, you're going to go on YouTube, you're going to check reviews, you're going to check rig rundowns and all of that, uh, which is another thing that we'll come back to. Remind me if I don't get to it. Uh, so you're going to have all of this stuff to choose from. Um, and you want a good starting point. So knowing a little bit about gear will get you a long way. So we've got a basic sound. Now I want to start. Now that is a little bit too dark for me. So again, referring back to that base, back to basics video, um, I'm not changing anything. I've not touched the amp, but I'm going to go to the cab. That's a little bit dark. So I'm going to change the mic to the 421. That's too bright. So maybe go to the 67. There we go. Perfect. So we've taken away some of that muddiness. Um, we've kept some clarity. I don't know if I actually shared my screen then. Sorry. Let me share my screen. Hold up. There we go. So let me repeat that. Full. So this is where we started. Uh, this was the mic that we were on. I'm cheering. I am cheering. Marvellous. 
That's the mark that we're on. I changed it to this one, which was a little bit too sharp for me. And then we went to the 67. <laughs> It's got clarity, it's got warmth, and it's got a nice amount of mids to it. And I like that one. Um, let's say you're kind of not happy with that, and you go, right, okay, now where do I go? Well, again, like I say, just maybe a little bit of YouTube searching, and, and you know, you're good to go. So I'm still on the cab. You've got all of these amps to choose from. Um, if you kind of, if you come from a tube amp background, then start there that's something else to talk about in my other video is if you're coming and you're trying to recreate a sound that you've already had start with that gear or as close to it as possible because it's a believe it or not it's a good starting point um likewise if you're going for some kind of artist sound or you've got a sound in your head that's inspired by something go and find out what gear is used on that basically so we're going to go in and i'm not sure on my screen there we go so we're going to go in and I'm going to change that to my particular favorite clean sound, uh, which is this one, which is the Cali Texas Channel 1. So out of the gate, I'm not happy with that. So I'm just going to go into the cab and I'm going to change that for the 160 ribbon. And there's my sound. Uh, if I was going for a dirtier amp, um, and I guess the kind of... The dirty side is where the kind of problems start because there's different kinds of dirt. There's bright and scratchy and then there's thick and juicy. So again, a little bit of kind of looking around, um, you know, what is the tone that you're going for inspired by and find out something that would fit within that. Um, if I want to go for a kind of a classic rock thing, um, then I'm probably going to go for something like this. Um, something to bear in mind as well, when you're pulling up an amp model, just imagine, tr treat all of this stuff, whether it's a model or the real thing, just treat it like you've walked into a store and you've got all of this gear laid out for you ready to try. And someone set this up. And it, it you know, you wouldn't plug into an amp and a cab um, or a combo or whatever and expect it to sound perfect you know the way someone else has set up because you've own, you've got your own personal taste so don't expect kind of the, the the amp model to be set exactly how you want so case in point for this particular one <laughs> You know, that's all well and good, but I want to, I know I want to bring the drive and master down. I want to add a little bit of presence and a little bit of treble. Maybe just crank the level a little bit, roll off some of that bass and... and that's it. Actually, quite lucky, that's exactly the sound I was looking for. And again, I know from uh, from just boring experience that I can roll the volume back on the guitar. And there's my clean sound, kind of old school classic rock. Um, Rolando, good evening from Mexico. Good morning over there. Yeah, I guess. Do you think it's better to try changing mic and cab first? Uh, and then amp EQ when looking for a tone. Um, yeah, I, I, probably. Um, I mean, again, kind of case in point, let's go back to the default on that without changing anything. If I go to the uh, amp and cap, if I want to kind of uh, brighten that up a little bit, I know if I go to the 421. Uh, that's a terrible example. Just scrolling through them, you can hear. There's just a massive difference in sound. So without changing anything on the amp, um, yeah, you can change the sound significantly with just the mic. You shouldn't need extra EQs unless you're trying to accent something specific. Um, 
but yeah, I know that kind of I've got the basic sound and then I go in there. So again, this is kind of the, the AM model I've chosen here. It's a model of, a, uh, of, of an old Plexi. So some of it's a little bit kind of, you know, legendary combinations, I guess, or legendary uh, amps. So classic rock, you'll see marshals all over the place. Um, and fenders for certain things. So it's kind of going, Jai Boston in the house. Um, good evening, sir. Morning. I've got to stop saying that. It's, it's evening here, so I'm just going to say evening. So it, it's kind of going, right, okay, I'm after a classic rock sound. Chances are you're going to want something like, um, you know, a British, um, yeah, maybe a Vox model or a Marshall model. Um, same with higher gain stuff. You want to kind of go down the bottom because that's where all the higher gain stuff lives. Uh, and do, do, do. if we go with one of the revs, you know, it, this is kind of a modern classic. Or maybe that. Like that, that's too dark, so I'm going to change it to the 57. So, you know, you absolutely can experiment, um, but having a little bit of basic knowledge about what these amps are, uh, generally would be used for is going to get you somewhere a lot quicker. And you call that up, you maybe tweak the gain stage uh, sort of to where you want it for a feel and, and, and an amount of distortion. And then, yeah, first port of call for general EQ, change that mic, that'll get you that little bit closer. And then final tweaks with the actual amp EQ. Remembering... Uh, the app, different amps work differently. Um, some of the boogie models uh, can, like the real amps, can be a bit of a nightmare because everything is super interactive and you change one thing and everything else changes, which is a, you know. Um, yeah, there we go. So, back here. Um, but again, back to that point of, um, you, you know, you might not like how this has been set up. You might want to roll some bass off, add some kind of clarity in there. <laughs> Things like that. Um, so, I mean, hopefully that kind of helps you with, um, with the amp choice. Like I say, it's just kind of, what are you trying to achieve? Where do you want to go with it? Wh what kind of style of music are you playing? Uh, what kind of sound? And, and just kind of be a little bit more informed um, informed or a little bit of research as to I'm going for this type of sound, this amp is kind of a, a mainstay in that arena. Uh, that's always going to help you. Choosing drive pedals, <laughs> well, let's do kind of general effects first because they're the easy thing. So choosing something like a phaser uh, as a great example, um, if we go in, we've got a couple of phases um, in the main thing, uh, Pebble and Script and Mod, uh, the Deluxe. So you've not got a great deal of choice. You do have the Legacy section, uh, which is marvellous. Some lovely stuff in there, and you've got even more options. Um, you know, different tremolos, but again, the tremolos sound differently. So the effects are a little bit easier because you can quite quickly go... <laughs> cleaner sound would be more appropriate Ross okay so straight I know I don't like that oh yeah there we go that's much better speed it up yeah actually I want it a little bit more choppy right perfect you know same with chorus do I want a kind of a vintagey uh, sort of more modern chorus or do I want an older style? No, so you can hear that's kind of a little bit more warbly, a little bit um, not irate, uh, not as sweet sounding, basically. So it, it, the effects, uh, things like modulation, um, are very quick, you know, to uh, to get through. Kind of the same with delays. You got a ton of different delays in here. Which one do you want? You can just quickly scroll through. 
the, uh, the, these top two are kind of fairly normal uh, when you get into things like the sweep echo. And you'll know that that is for a very specific effect. Um, drive pedals, on the other hand, we've got loads. Now this, I think, is kind of, this is another one where you kind of go, oh, I, don't know, I don't know where to start. Um, I, did, I didn't change that. There we go. So drive pedals, this is the kind of thing. This is the area where I think, uh, along with amps, um, arguably cabs and maybe mics, drive pedals, front end drive pedals to, to get your core tone can be a bit of a minefield. Um, again, kind of down here, you've got the, the, the lower gain stuff and we get progressively kind of more filthy. But again, this classic combination. So this particular amp model, it's very sort of American circuit. Um, so I know that if I get uh, an 808 model and I do that thing, it's going to do that. <laughs> because that's what that little green box does. Again, refer to uh, the manual for kind of what th these, um, uh, what the code names are. So knowing kind of what effect does what to what amp is kind of, again, important, just a little bit of research. Um, so, I mean, this is, uh, I think I've talked about this before. This is one of my favorites. I know because I've got this, um, this actual pedal, I know that if I do that, I can make a very American kind of clean sound like that, kind of like a, a screaming hot rodded British thing. So I know that when I pull that up, it's going to kind of tighten a little bit of that low end and maybe you want a bit of that. It's going to add some mids um, and give me a t a either some drive or less compressed drive or super compressed if I go to the distortion mode. Uh, crank that up, turn that down. All that stuff. So, I mean, that's one of my favorites just because it does a bunch of things. But the Dynadrive, for example, that's, you know, if you want to go for the, uh, the kind of tone that you only get out of a $100,000 amp, um, that's that pedal. Now, if you've never played one of those, um, it's great to have there and it's great to experiment with, but, you know, just do that basically. If you're trying to, if you're struggling, or you're struggling with all of these options, like I said, just go with what you know. Um, and that could be the good old, um, I think it's orange, I'm colorblind. Uh, little distortion pedal. <laughs> I think most players have had one of those at, at one point or another. Um, so, yeah, it, it really is just kind of go with what you know, and that's going to get you there a, a, a load quicker, basically. But other cool little tricks that you can do with this is kind of realizing what if you're stacking drive pedals. So this is the example where we're using a clean amp, um, and we're getting all of our gain from, uh, from drive. So I actually set that. A little bit lower. So that's a sound I really like. I'll maybe add a teeny bit of present. So again, that kind of American circuit, you'll find that if you put something like a, a, a fuzz face kind of thing on, Yeah, hilariously, it actually sounds pretty good with this particular amp. But normally, this this type of fuzz circuit doesn't work well um, with that kind of classic American clean. 
which is slightly annoying. But if we kind of use this pedal to make it a little bit more British. <laughs> A lovely kind of big bloomy thing and because that circuit works in a certain way roll the volume down so again just that little bit of kind of oh what's this it's this pedal well that worked really well with this so, you know, the, the, this classic combinations of, of amps and pedals for a reason, because they work really well together. Uh, kind of a little bit same as, as, you know, the actual order of pedals, some of it is common sense. Um, some of it is a bit of experimentation and discovering what you like. Again, great example of that, hopefully to get you a little bit closer. So I've got kind of a mid-game <laughs> mid thing there. Um, I'm going to move that there. So I'm going to add a boost. I'm going to add the kinky boost because it's a great boost. So there, before that pedal, I'm just pushing more level into that pedal. So it's gone from that to crunchier. Now if I put it afterwards, and my computer stops being slow. So it's adding a little bit because I'm smashing the front end of the amp a little bit more. Uh, let me clean that up to give greater effect. And I want to actually roll a little bit of that off. Um, there we go. I'm kind of adding volume rather than this way. I'm not adding that much volume. I'm adding more gain uh, because I'm kicking the, like you would on kind of an amp just on the edge of breakup, I'm kicking that particular pedal um, in the face a little bit. Um, you know, again, great example actually on this one. So let's use a, a good old clean boost. Let's crank that up a little bit. Because why not? And this should be a bit louder. It's not because I've got too much gain on there. There we go. Versus. So that's kind of where pedal order it kind of is important something like a phaser actually let's put some more let's put the gain back on because fun gain is fun let's do that so if i add a phaser this is where the pedal order thing becomes personal preference so my personal preference of a phaser is before any gain <laughs> put that after it's going to be a lot more accentuated especially if you put it after the amp as well you can hear that sweeps a lot more accentuated than before things like that um where are we Check the comments. Carly, I love all Line 6 products. Got impeccable taste, is all I can say to that. So, yeah, hopefully that's kind of making sense so far, um, rather than me just rambling. Um, like I say, where to start? Start with an amp and cab. Um, that should get you 90% of your tone. If, you're, if you want a high gain sound, but you want to always revert back to a clean amp, then yes, you can add multiple amps, um, uh, which is fine. And then you would maybe separate the the amp and the cab block and just go through one cab uh, as a good example of that. If you want to get high gain sounds from stacking multiple pedals, then it's kind of knowing or finding out which pedals work really well stacked together and then which order they want to go in because they will, um, they will sound different. Um, just a super quick example of that. 
I discovered personally that so I like that uh, let's get that little green box in there so before kind of smashing it sounds like that which is kind of the traditional way but if you put it after Sounds different, kind of darkens it up a little bit. Uh, let's crank the level. So they both sound good. Um, like I say, it just kind of depends on what you're after. Uh, cheers, Thor. Uh, Bernard. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Bernard because I don't know which one. Uh, it does. I use one clean amp for cleans uh, and dirty amps for crunch times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a lot of people do that, uh, you know, using a, a crunchy amp and then hitting the front end with various different flavors of boost pedal, whether it's a mid boost pedal or a clean boost or whatever. And that will, again, that will, uh, different amps will react a certain way. Uh, British amps kind of compress differently to American amps and so on and so forth. And you're not a fan of distortion or overdrive pedals, uh, real or virtual. Yeah, absolutely fine, personal preference. Um, I like everything because I'm greedy. But I think kind of, you know, the whole distortion pedal or overdrive pedal thing, um, it, it's another. It's just another way to manipulate the sound. Yeah, it's definitely another way to get lost, uh, but um, it, it's just, it's all different flavors. Um, and especially if you're using a clean amp uh, and overdrive or distortion pedals to kind of get your gain sounds. It's most definitely different flavors. That's where they really come out. If you're going into a crunchy or a high gain amp already, it's just kind of adding a certain something. You know, a clean boost will will do something very different to a kind of a mild overdrive uh, that's very mid heavy, for example. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's kind of all making sense so far. Hopefully. Uh, so I guess the last subject we want to I want to go through, um, or I want to go back to that knowledge is power. Like I said, the knowledge is power thing is just general research. Um, if if you weren't using modeling stuff and you're using analog and tube amps and, and all that, if you're looking for a new overdrive pedal, you you don't generally certainly not these days. Uh, you might go on a recommendation, but you're going to go on YouTube uh, and Facebook and all that, and you're going to look for demos. And you're probably going to look for demos with that pedal using the guitar that you have or close to it and the amp that you have or close to it. And that will give you a much more informed decision um, and help you choose from the stuff that you've got within Helix or PodGo. Um, I think that's what I think. So, um, yeah, the final thing I want to cover here is to copy or not to copy. Um, don't know why. Don't know why I shared that screen. Don't need that yet. So when I say to copy or not to copy, do we go for, you know, if we're going for an artist sound, do we go very specific? So we, we do all the research, we Google and we YouTube and we watch the rig rundowns and all this. Do we copy that rig exactly? That's a personal choice. Now, absolutely, there are certain artist tones that when you're going for, you've kind of got to use the stuff that they use because you can blag um, your way through a lot of things just by default. So I know um, if I call up my main preset here, I the band I play, and we do a ton of different stuff. Uh, we're with a load of different people. <laughs> So um, this is kind of two different amps that I'm using here and then just a ton of pedal. I'll, I'll show you the preset. It's kind of fairly involved. There you go. So there's loads of stuff in there, um, but they're all kind of relatively generic sounds. But I know that if I want to go, if I want to sound like Andy Timmons for a minute, then I can get my clean sound and kick on kind of that and that. And <laughs> Or if I want to be 
80s. Um, you know, so that kind of that's a that's a great example. That's the kind of thing where you go, right, okay, we're doing some 80s thing and I want that Landau kind of super 80s kind of sparkly thing. That is close-ish, um, but it's probably not exactly like the record. So I could go in and I could tweak it further. Uh, but then you're getting into that, um, that thing of, you know, do you use a preset per song or do you use one generic preset for everything? I use one preset for basically everything unless I'm playing to something like a click track where I've got to have synced up delays. Uh, but if I want to sound like, um, here's another great example, let me show you this. Do, do, do. So I've got that, uh, no, it's that sound I want. So if I go to the delay and I just turn that delay up a little bit, um, and I never get this right. So if I want to sound like the edge, it's the same thing. It's close enough. Oh, uh oh, I pressed a button. Excuse me. Um, it's close enough to get uh, through a load of different stuff. But if you're talking someone like Brian May, and I did do another one of these last year on the Brian May sound. So look back through the page and, and, and search for it. Uh, it's it's kind of, although it's simple, we won't go into it today, but that does involve some very specific things. And it's Brian May, it's legendary. So you want to get it right. Um, and you also want to buy a sixpence. And if you go and watch the video, then you'll see. So, you know, to copy or not to copy, the, you know, for me, it's can I, you know, use the stuff that I'm used to? And I think that's the thing with my main preset here that I use for everything. It sounds I like, um, which cover a good amount of ground. So uh, to run you through them real quick. So it's just a generic clean sound. And then kind of a, uh, on the edge. Then kind of a hot rodded British crunch. And then a big kind of searing lead. Um, and I've got kind of different stone boxes that I can manipulate any of those with. But I know what I can get out of those and how I can manipulate them. So if I want to be all jazzy for a minute, I know I can go to that kind of thing where I can go. Just roll the tone off. That's the same sound as I did the kind of U2 stuff. So a little bit of manipulation, um, and you can get a ton of different things out of one sound. But that's a sound I'm comfortable with, and I know how it feels. It's not exactly trying to copy uh, someone, but I can manipulate that to work in a ton of different scenarios, basically. Um, if I'm playing with someone and we're doing a Queen track, I will absolutely go to a preset with those components, and I'll pull out the sixpence sixpence because I think that's kind of important and it, it you can hear it I think even uh, non guitar players can kind of hear that difference and you can't you can't blag something like that basically uh, a metal sound you can get away with a lot of different things um, crunch and and even clean to an extent and it's just different variations and slightly different flavors uh, that you're looking at for that stuff so I think some of it comes down to personal preference um, I fully endorse absolutely nailing those sounds. There's a ton of great guys on YouTube that we've got a uh, custom tone, we've got the marketplace. So you can absolutely go in, download one of those presets, um, whether it be free off custom tone or, uh, or pay for off marketplace or anywhere else. And, and you can have something that's about as accurate as it's gonna get because people have worked a, a lot of time on these things. Um, should you do that? That's entirely up to you. For me, 
kind of what I've got is good enough and I know how the stuff feels because that was basically kind of copying my rig, my analog rig that I had before that was getting me all of these sounds and I was getting through a ton of different material. Um, that works for me. I speak to a bunch of people that absolutely want to nail those t those tones because they're super passionate about it and, and that's fine too. So to copy or not to copy, it's kind of up to you but they're the two kind of camps. For me, it's having something that I'm comfortable with because if I've dialed in a very specific artist sound, um, I might not like the feel of it, and that is important. So you can manipulate it a little bit, but absolutely, you've got to you've got to feel right uh, when you're playing. Um, I've talked for forever. Then sorry, that was a really long window. Wait, let's check the comments. Um, uh, oh, wow, do you use snapshots or just go to Pedalmon? Uh, kind of both. I don't actually have a camera set up here. But yeah, I'm using uh, Helix with four snapshots. And then I've got four pedals, uh, instant access uh, pedals on the top. Uh, there's just a front end gain boost to give me a little bit more for when I need to play lots of notes or just kind of a little bit of an edge. I've got a chorus because I kind of generally need to add that frequently for various things. I've got a delay so I can basically, if I'm playing a solo, I'm, I suck, so I need delay on any kind of sound to play any kind of lead stuff. And then I've got a boost, uh, which I'm actually using a graphic EQ boost. And again, I think I, I kind of cover this in detail in the Back to Basics video from a few weeks ago. So go and check that out if you want a bit more info on that. But yeah, I've got other pedals in there as well, so I can very quickly just go into Stombox mode and add something, you, you know, whatever else is in there, a fuzz or a, uh, or, or a pitch shifter, for example. Um, Carly, I copied all the parameters and levels exactly and gave me a good album bass sound. Uh, then I just de depend on... Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, dial in your sounds, you kind of... You, you, you get your core sound kind of at home. Um, if you want to match the levels, if you're using multiple presets, do that in context. So either at the venue um, or a rehearsal space kind of with the band you're playing in or if you're playing to backing tracks sort of at volume. And then, yeah, things like Global EQ, just use that as the final kind of mastering tweak, basically. If you're playing on a wooden hollow stage, um, you probably want less bass. If you're playing in a tiled room with loads of windows, you're probably going to want a, a lot less high end. So things like Global EQ, absolutely just kind of use that as a mastering thing per room um, and kind of sort your levels out individually. Jeff, what levels do you set your presets to? Um, Kind of whatever I feel like. Um, uh, I, I guess kind of my main preset that I used, the, the levels were set there and, and it sounded good at whatever the level I was kind of at at the time in the room. Um, and then if I'm building another preset to go with that, then you know I'll match that to kind of my main preset. Uh, for one artist I play with, like I say, it's, it's, it's a full set, it's all click track, and there's a different preset per song because different delays and reverbs and tremolos and, and all sorts of stuff, it's, it's, it's a pop thing. So um, that has to be kind of a different preset per song, and then I will go in and I will level match. Um, I think Nick Bell did a level matching thing um, a, a few weeks ago, but just to show you how I do it, um, I'll kind of, you know, let's say this is, I mean, you can maybe see from the kind of menu here, I've just got different main presets and this is just different flavors of Dirty Amp. Uh, if I want to match all of those up uh, without going into too much detail, I'll go to this end block here and this is the one I'll use to kind of level up. So switch between them, go in here and then save, basically. And that's how I personally level my presets. Um, where are your older videos you mentioned? Uh, they will be on the, uh, Neil, you are watching on Facebook. They're on the Facebook page. Uh, they're also on the YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, you can just go back. There's ones back to basics. There's, uh, like I said, there's a Brian May one. I think I did. I think I did an Andy Tim as well. I've, we've all, uh, me and Tony and Nick uh, and Doc, we've all done a, a ton of these. So just kind of have a look. The back to basics one was, I think, about three weeks ago. Um, Scott. Uh, hey Ross, are you posting any of these presets? Um, I can. 
uh, I can post them on Custom Tone, and you're on Facebook. So I'll 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 post my main preset. Be aware that the main preset I'm using here, I am using an, an impulse response. Uh, someone actually asked earlier difference. You know, should you use a, a cab model or an impulse response? Personal preference. Um, the impulse responses I use are of of cabinets that I actually own. So that's kind of my thing whenever I'm talking about impulse responses to people because it's a minefield. It's like trying to find the perfect overdrive pedal. It's just an absolute nightmare. So for me, just kind of dumbing it down, I own these cabs, the, the actual cabs. So I'm going to buy those. I'm going to buy a mix of mics. I'm going to trust an engineer because I don't know what I'm doing as an engineer. And that's good enough. So I know when I call up one of the, whether it's a 112, or 212, or a 412, I know what that cab sounds like, um, so I know what kind of result I'm going to get off straight out of the bat. Uh, but also the built-in cabs, I'll use a ton of those for, for for different things as well, and that is arguably more versatile because you know, as you saw earlier, if you were here earlier before I started rambling, um, just changing the mic is it just so easy and so quick. So the built-in, I would say the built-in stock cabs are considerably more versatile and arguably sound better than any impulse response because you can get so much more out of them um, and I think they take up less DSP too which is cool so yeah Neil I'll um, I will upload my preset it's got an IR on it um, but swap that for your IR or a built-in cab or whatever uh, you particularly prefer but yeah you're welcome to that it's got the snapshots kind of programmed happy days um, I think that's kind of it so just to kind of summarize if you if you struggling with choosing things um just kind of go like i said go with what you know um if you're looking for kind of a very american kind of clean sound you know legendary pick one of those amps you, you know um, because that's a great starting point if you're going with metal stuff you know look what people are using or if you're coming from an amp background kind of go with what you've been using and it's a great starting point uh, as soon as you've got kind of a sound you love dialed in then go and experiment because realistically and I think I said this before you already have a clean sound in your head and you already have a crunch sound and a lead sound and a heavy sound you know all these sounds exist already in your head and you just got to kind of try and find them um, all those sounds are usually inspired by someone or a, a, a particular player or kind of some combination or a particular track so going back and finding out what is involved in that particular sound will it will just save you so much time going through and going no 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 i remember what i said and i'll repeat it for anyone that's kind of joined late don't expect if you were buying this stuff in the in real life and you went into a guitar store and the sales guy had set all of this stuff up for you for you to choose he set it up don't expect to just plug in and, and it sound perfect exactly how he's set up because he's going to have different tastes to you. Um, so like I say, our sound design team, they've programmed the default settings to be a certain way. Some of that is kind of classic stuff, some of it's personal preference. Uh, you can obviously change that. So don't expect an amp, mo an amp and cab model or an amp model or whatever that you pull up to sound perfect straight out of the box. You know, maybe tweak a few things. Um, like I say, change the mic as well. You should be able to get a, a ton of the way there with just the amp and cab and change the mic. Um, when you're looking at pedals, again, classic combinations are there for a reason. Um, if you're looking at certain things, it is kind of quick to go through, but check out YouTube and rig rundowns and things. That's going to give you a more informed decision about what certain pedals do. If you don't have them to handle, you don't know what they do. Um, uh, that comes in with the knowledge is power thing. Um, just a little bit of research, uh, a little bit of time researching the kind of sound you're after, and you'll get a good idea of where you want to go. And then do you dial in the exact kind of thing that that particular artist is using? If you're going for, if you're playing in a covers band and you want to nail a sound exactly, do you copy it exactly or do you just use something generic? Like I said, some of the stuff you can get away with, something like Brian May or Eric Johnson, um, you know, they're really specific sounds. So you definitely kind of want to go, um, you know, very specific. Uh, if you don't like the feel, kind of, it's finding some kind of middle ground, really. Um, and that is all my opinion, uh, and take it for what it's worth. 
probably worth nothing to some of you but look that that's kind of how I work and that saves me a lot of time and yes I'm a geek no I've got no friends um, so I know a lot about this stuff anyway but that's just me watching far too many YouTube pedal demos and and having you know spending stupid amounts of money on pedals over the years that's how I work um, hopefully it's gonna save you some time so I've rattled on enough for nearly an hour I do apologize for um, anyone that's been here from the beginning um, like I say the back to basics video covers a lot of that but goes into more uh, in-depth detail about some of the stuff as well um, we've got a ton of stuff on <clears throat> you know on, on the actual amp models if you're calling up the amp models there's loads of controls in there the you know the home and the ripple and all of that I never touch that just so you know uh, but I think uh, uh, Nick and Tony did stuff on gain staging and and all of those kind of power amp controls. So go and check that out if you kind of if you're already at the point where you've got some sounds and you maybe want to get a little bit deeper. Go and check that out. Same with the routine thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you so much if you've been here from the beginning uh, for putting up my, with my voice and listening. Um, thanks everyone for turning up in one form or another. The, you will be able to watch this video back, so I'm aware that I talked very quickly uh, and ramble on a bit. So you can watch this video back uh, on Facebook and YouTube um, shortly, uh, possibly later tonight, uh, maybe straight away. And keep your eyes posted. We've got another one of these next week and the week after. We've got uh, Nick Bell next week, uh, legend that he is, and the equally legendary uh, and beautiful Tony Campanova the week after. Uh, I can't tell you what they're covering, but have a look. It's always good stuff hanging out with those guys. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. Um, I'll upload, for anyone that was interested, I'll upload my main preset to my custom tone, and I'll throw it in the, in the, um, in the comments box there for you. Thanks again, and uh, take care of yourselves. See you again. Cheers. Bye.